Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the Euclidean algorithm. And this is really going to help us solve linear congruences. But first, there are a few things we have to look at. So if I gave you the fraction 9 twelfths, you'd probably see that it can be reduced by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 3. This gives us 3 fourths. Well, you may recall that this is called finding the greatest common factor. This is central to the Euclidean algorithm. Um, and then we're also going to be referring to it as the greatest common divisor instead. So just a little change in terminology. Well, in elementary school, we use the method of just writing out all of the factors. So for 25 and 10, we'd see that the biggest common factor is 5. Um, and a note on uh, notation is that I'm going to be writing GCD in parentheses 25, 10 equals 5, or oftentimes without the GCD in front. So just know that that means greatest common divisor. Well, this method of writing out all of the factors won't really work if we have really big numbers, because who knows all of the factors of 2046? It would take a long time to write them out. So this is where the Euclidean algorithm is going to come into play. So if I gave you any two integers, let's just say a and b, here I'm writing a comma b element of z, that's just some fancy math notation. Um, so any two integers a and b where both of them are not zero, I can always write a equals b times q plus r, where q is another integer and r is a remainder, like we talked about last time. For example, if I gave you a equals 25 and b equals 13, we would write 25 equals 1 times 13 plus 12, where 25 is a, 13 is b, and 12 is r. Like last time, uh, we could set 25 as congruent to 12 mod 13. Okay, so now comes the big piece. Given any a, b, and r, such that a equals b times q plus r, I'm claiming that the greatest common divisor of a and b is the same as that of b and r. This may seem like a really big claim right now, but once you see it, it makes a lot of sense. I'm going to be showing a visual proof. There's an algebraic one too, but I find this one helps me understand it better. So let's take, for example, that a equals 56 and b equals 32. Here, I'm drawing an array to represent each of them, and the number of columns is the greatest common divisor. Let's call this d1. We can see that 32 is four rows of d1, and 56 is seven rows of d1. So the remaining three rows must be r. This means that d1 divides r and d1 divides b. So the greatest common divisor of b and r is at least as big as d1. If you are at all confused right now, I would encourage you to pause the video and think through this argument for yourself. Now, let's pretend that the greatest common divisor of b and r is bigger than d1. That means that 32 and r can both be split into d2 columns. But we know that 32 plus r equals 56. So 56 can also be split into d2 columns. Because d2 divides b and d2 divides a, d2 cannot be bigger than the greatest common divisor of a and b, by definition of greatest common divisor. <laughs> so that means that d2 equals d1. So now we can finally use the Euclidean algorithm. It's going to be sort of like a chain of actions based on the property that we just proved and the fact that we can write any two numbers as a equals b times q plus r. So we can start by writing 56 equals 1 times 32 plus 24. Now 32 is the b and 24 is the r, so we do the same thing on those two numbers. 32 equals 1 times 24 plus 8. And then we can do the same thing again and write 24 equals 3 times 8 
plus zero. Now, this zero tells us that eight divides 24. So that means that the greatest common divisor of 24 and eight is eight. So then we can conclude that the greatest common divisor of 56 and 32 equals that of 32 and 24, equals that of 24 and eight, which equals eight. So the greatest common divisor of 56 and 32 is eight. So you can see that the Euclidean algorithm ends up finding the greatest common divisor between two numbers. But we can also use it to find the inverse of a number mod m. I'll show you that using our congruence that we looked at last time. So 7x is congruent to 1 mod 121. We know that x is the inverse of 7 mod 121. We also know that a solution only exists for this congruence if 7 and 121 are coprime. But another way of saying that is that the greatest common divisor of 121 and 7 is 1. So at the end of the Euclidean algorith algorithm, we'll get out a 1. I'll show you that now. So we can start by 121 equals 17 times 7 plus 2, 7 equals 3 times 2 plus 1, and 2 equals 2 times 1 plus 0. We can move around each of these equations algebraically, and we get out 1 equals 7 minus 3 times 2, but then 2 equals 121 minus 17 times 7. So plugging that in to the second equation, we get out uh, 1 equals 7 minus 3 times 121, plus 51 times 7, so 1 equals 52 times 7 minus 3 times 121. I went a little bit quickly here, so go ahead and pause and think through the math for yourself if you're a little bit confused. Now, we can get a better look at this by moving things around. So here we have 52 times 7 minus 1 equals 3 times 121. Well, that means that 52 times 7 minus 1 is congruent to 0, mod 121. So 52 times 7 is congruent to 1, mod 121. Therefore, 52 is the inverse of 7, mod 121. Let's look at the congruence. Ax is congruent to 1, mod m. We know that ax minus 1 is then uh, equal to m times some integer y sub 0. So ax minus m times y sub 0 equals 1. And we can set negative y sub 0 equal to another integer y. So ax plus my equals 1. We're assuming that this only has integer inputs. So it's what we call a linear Diophantine equation. And we know that this only has a solution if the greatest common divisor of and m is 1. Uh, basically saying that a only has an inverse mod m if a and m are coprime. We can generalize this. So ax plus my equals some other integer k. This only has a solution if a and m, uh, the greatest common divisor of a and m, divides k. I'll prove this to you now. Let's call the greatest common divisor of a and m d. We know that a equals d times a1 and m equals d times m1, a1 and m1 being some integer. So then we can rewrite this saying d times a1 times x plus d times m1 times y equals k. So then a1 times x plus m1 times y equals k divided by d. And this must be an integer because everything on the left hand side is assumed to be an integer as well. So therefore d divides k. So we can use the Euclidean algorithm to help us solve these types of equations. Here we have 32x plus 56y equals 16. We've already done the Euclidean algorithm for 32 and 56, 
and we know that their greatest common divisor is 8, and since 16 is the multiple of 8, this equation has a solution. So we can backtrack the steps of the algorithm, solve for the integer at the end, and get out 8 equals 32 minus 56 minus 32. And doing some algebra, we see 8 equals 2 times 32 minus 56. And since 16 is 2 times 8, we can multiply everything by 2, and we get 16 equals 4 times 32 minus 2 times 56. So then the solution to this equation is x equals 4 and y equals negative 2. This is a very useful technique that I'm sure you'll see as you do more work in mod. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all next time.